friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. We're out in the garden today, specifically at one of our tomato trellises, and it is time to do some pruning. I have been doing some light pruning throughout the season, but it is really time to go ahead and get in there and do some heavy pruning in time for all this hot weather to set in, which in my area means fungal disease also sets in. So pruning is one way that we can help decrease our risk for disease. So today's video is all about pruning tomatoes. We're gonna cover do's, don'ts, how-tos, all that good stuff. Let's get started. If you would like help planning a productive garden, scroll down to the description box of this video and click this link for a free garden printable. We calculated quantities for a year's supply of the most common garden vegetables and organized them into a neat chart to help you plan. We'll send it straight to your inbox. If you're new here, we invite you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials on gardening and food preservation, food storage, and more. So the first thing you need to know about the tomatoes is that there are two different categories of tomatoes, determinate and indeterminate. And it's very important to know which tomato category yours falls into before you start the pruning process because they are pruned very differently. In fact, you can dramatically reduce your harvest if you accidentally prune determinate plants the wrong way. So it's really important to go ahead and know what your tomato plant is. I have been growing tomatoes for years and still to this day, I do a quick Google search every year before I start pruning because I don't have those memorized and a lot of times I'm growing a whole different new to me varieties um, so I always just plug in a Google a Google search and you know get your tomato name and say like this is celebrity you can say is celebrity a determinate or indeterminate and it you know you'll get your answer in a few seconds um, so these are celebrity tomatoes and they are determinate now you notice here that I have them on um, a cattle panel trellis determinate tomatoes don't necessarily need a cattle panel trellis because they are determinate and determinate means they're going to basically grow to a determined uh, height and not grow any higher than that it also means that they're going to put all of their fruit on at once and then die off the indeterminate plants will just continue to grow and grow and grow as long as your season and your condition and your soil conditions um, allow for it to do so and they will also continue to produce tomatoes on and on and on until a frost kills them or something else wipes them out so deter i like to grow both in my garden determinate tomatoes are really great for canning because they all come on at one time and so you can get your big sauces and salsa projects done but even though I like to grow determinate tomatoes for canning, I still choose to harvest as they start to ripen and get them in my freezer until I can set aside a whole weekend to do all my tomato projects. But that's just one thing to know that if you're going for canning, determinate can be um, helpful in that regard. Whereas indeterminate, you're getting a tomato here, a tomato there, a few tomatoes here, you know, pro, you know it's prolonged. And so you'll, you'll have to find a way to um, get all your tomatoes together and save them for your canning projects, which is just the freezer does a fantastic job of that. I also grow plenty of indeterminate tomatoes for canning as well. San Marzano um, are fantastic. I'm doing some Brandy Boys this year. Um, Amish Paste tomatoes are doing great. I can't remember if those are indeterminate or determinate. Quick Google search will tell you. Okay, so pruning determinate tomato plants is, as mentioned, that they all, the fruit all comes on at one point during the season. Because that is the case, and because they're not gonna continue to just shoot out new shoots like indeterminate plants are, we can't just prune willy-nilly and hope for a good harvest. So with determinate plants like these celebrity tomatoes, the only place you wanna prune is the bottom about 12 to 24 inches. 24 inches might be getting a little bit too high on determinate tomatoes, but I generally shoot for 12 to 24 inches of those lower branches. Why even prune those lower branches? And that is because anywhere those leaves can touch the soil or when it rains and water can hit the soil and splatter soil up onto the leaves, that is the breeding grounds for fungal diseases. So to try to reduce those chances of that happening, we can go ahead and prune the lower branches and you know, hopefully squeak past the fungal disease stage that tomatoes can be kind of, kind of prone to. Um, so let me bring you up closer and I'm gonna show you how to prune a determinate tomato plant. I have a kitty here who's really making it difficult for me to get this shot. <laughs> Every time I set up the camera, he comes over and hops in my lap. <laughs> Say hi, Garfield. Hi, I'm Garfield. Hi. <laughs> okay, can you go scoot? Scoot, scoot. Okay, so here we are. Let me put my hand behind the main stem so you can kind of see it pretty good. We're down here at the base of one of these celebrity tomatoes. So these off. Oh, 
<laughs> Garfield. Oh my goodness. Okay. He literally will not leave my camera alone. He won't leave me alone. Okay. Oh, good. He looks like he's taking a nap. I'm gonna lay down, take a nap. Okay. Stay there. Okay. Here we go. Take two. Main stem. We want to trim off these bottom branches. I don't know if you can see this. These uh, leaves right here are already getting some, a little bit of disease going on on them. Now, this is not a serious disease, like where it's going to wipe out my tomato, my whole crop. Um, but it is enough to uh, just be a great example of why we are doing this in the first place. So to prune tomatoes, you can use pruning shears or just a regular pair of scissors. I will tell you that I have owned two or three pair of pruning shears in my gardening uh, life and they have all broken. So scissors have never broken on me. So I just use scissors. If you have a pair of pruning shears that are just tried and true that have never broken on you and you have put them through some serious wear and tear, I think that's the issue. I put my um, pruning shears through some serious, serious use. But if you have some, drop them, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know about them. So I'm just going to do a nice clean clip right there where the branch meets that main stem. Here's another one. The sun's making it hard for you to see. Let me put my hand. Yeah. Okay. So this one again, look, it's touching the ground. So it's got to go. And the plant is still very young. This branch right here isn't going to be producing tomatoes anyway. So we're not losing any um, tomatoes. We're not decreasing our harvest by cutting off this lower branch. And that's something you've really got to be concerned about with determinate tomato plants, like I said, because they, they, they only set out a determined amount of fruit. And you know, that's that. So I'm looking around and seeing now this branch right here is touching the ground, but we're starting to get to the point where it's, um, well, I don't know. See, this is the thing with pruning tomatoes. And this is a, a, like a pet peeve of mine. Um, a, a whole lot of articles that you read make it seem like pruning tomatoes are, it's like a, you know, you've got to do it this way and there's only this one right way. And you know, if you don't do it this way, you're not gonna, it's gonna affect your harvest. But pruning tomatoes is extremely climate specific. Um, if you live somewhere where it is not, your summers are not really humid, um, let's say you get, your, summer, your summers are just pretty dry. Um, let's say you live in a pretty mild climate where the temperatures don't climb into the 100s during the summer for weeks at a time, you could get by with not pruning at all. So keep that in mind too. And I live in the hot, humid South, so pruning is an absolute must for me. But you, I, I, that came to mind because I was second guessing myself about whether to prune this vine, this branch. And it just reminded me that, hey, I should probably mention that pruning is very climate specific. But let me explain to you why I'm second guessing this. So it's touching the ground. So part of me is like, yeah, go ahead and cut it. Um, but I have weed fabric here this year. So this is actually not touching the soil. And if I look at the leaves, they're still beautiful. They're not getting diseased. Um, the other thing I want to, uh, that's making me second guess, ow, Garfield, don't do that. <laughs> Pawing at me. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that we are, if I prune here, this, even though it's only 12 inches above the ground, I trench planted this tomato. So it is actually about 24 feet. It's, it's trench plants a foot in the ground. So it is actually about 24 inches at this height. At 24 inches, anything above that, you're starting to produce fruit. And with determinate tomatoes, we have a limited number of fruit that's gonna be set. So we really don't wanna limit that even more by cutting off branches. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna monitor this lower branch, even though it is touching the ground. I'm gonna monitor this one and um, just, you know, I'll make that judgment call later if it starts getting some disease looking spots on it. Okay, let me just take you through, actually, here's one more. Let me see if you can, let me move the camera so you can see this one. Okay, here's the main stem. Here's this branch right here. It is touching. Again, it's only touching the weed fabric, but look at all of these spots that I'm getting on these leaves. See how they're not looking great? So not only is it touching the ground, not only is it a lower leaf, it's not looking great. It's only a little bit lower than this one right here, which I'm not gonna cut, but that, again, that's just your judgment call. As you prune tomatoes and the more experience that you get, um, and honestly, I watch YouTube videos like this one to help me gain more experience when, um, like in the off season during the fall and the winter, and I was trying to learn all I could so that I could hit the ground running. I watch videos like this to help me can kind of gain that experience and get familiar uh, with what to look for. Um, so 
I did choose to clip that one for the reasons that I showed you with those leaves really not looking not looking the best. So I'm going to get all the rest of these celebrity determinate tomatoes done and we'll take you over to the indeterminate tomatoes and show you how to prune indeterminate tomatoes. Okay here is where most of my indeterminate tomatoes are growing and I do want to share that as a tip that I highly recommend that if you are going to be planting both determinate and indeterminate tomatoes in your garden that you plant them in separate spaces just so for the purpose of pruning that you don't accidentally prune your determinate tomato plants the same way you prune your indeterminate tomato plants and you'll get a lower harvest as a result. So I have my indeterminate tomato plants planted all throughout this trellis here. This is a Cherokee purple. It's one of our favorite slicer tomatoes. It is an heirloom tomato. Um, and as such, it's not quite as hardy as those hybrids, um, but it is just an absolutely delicious and beautiful tomato. So I wanted to chat with you about pruning indeterminate tomatoes before actually taking you through and showing you how. So one thing to note about indeterminate tomato plants, oh, a hummingbird is right behind the camera. Oh, they went away. Ah, cool. Okay, anyway, cute hummingbird. <clears throat> Man, it came so close. That's fantastic. Okay. We just, we have a hummingbird recipe. We just published it on the blog like last week, I think. And it's like a DIY how to um, make your own sugar water for hummingbirds. Um, and it's just, they're beautiful if you want to attract them to your property. I'll link that in the description box below. I know it's random, but we just had a hummingbird visit right behind the camera. So I feel like it's appropriate to go ahead and put that DIY hummingbird nectar down in the description box below. But back to tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes, like I said, continue to grow and grow and grow, and as such, they continue to shoot out tomatoes left and right. But also, because they continue to grow and grow and grow, they can get unruly very fast. One of the reasons why we prune tomatoes is for airflow. Again, this is not cut and dry. It's not a one-size-fits-all. You've got to know your climate, study your climate, but in the hot, humid south, if you have temperatures that get above the 90s, that get into the hundreds for a weeks at a time, if your humidity level levels are over 50% for weeks at a time or days at a time, you're going to need to prune your tomatoes. So airflow, because indeterminate tomatoes just, they shoot out all new shoots out the side all season long, they can just become one giant bush that can get seven to eight feet tall, by the way. They can get ridiculously tall. Airflow is a far bigger issue with our indeterminate plants than they are our determinate plants. And since it is indeterminate, we don't have to be quite as careful with our pruning as we do with determinate. So I have already pruned this tunnel pretty heavily. I was um, pruning down here pretty heavily and, I, and it hit me, oh, I, I, need, to, I need to film about this. Um, and so I, I, I stopped and paused, but you will see when I bring you up closer, I'm gonna give you a, a much closer view here. You'll see where I have already been pruning and we'll talk about that. Um, but today's focus is going to be on creating that airflow. Um, but just like with determinate plants, we still want to prune that first 12 to 24 inches. And I will go closer to the 24 inches mark on indeterminate tomatoes because again, they're not producing tomatoes. Generally, they're not producing tomatoes until the plant is around that 24 inch tall mark. But keep in mind that when you see a close up in just a minute, that it only looks to be the main stem before any lower branches only looks to be about 12 inches tall it is 12 inches buried in the ground so it is actually 24 inches tall when we look and see 12 inches tall so lower branches um, creating airflow i'm going to bring you up here and show you that and then i'm going to show you one more thing that you really need to know about tomatoes when it comes to pruning okay the first thing we're going to do to this tomato plant is to prune off these lower branches now notice it is not touching the ground yet, but it's only gonna keep on growing and it will eventually touch the ground, number one. But number two, it's not doing anything for me. This little branch right here is not going to be producing tomatoes. So why encourage this tomato plant to put energy into growing out this shoot when I would rather put the energy into growing up and producing fruit? So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this bottom branch. Now the next thing I want to talk about with tomato pruning is suckers. So tomato suckers are, it's when the tomato puts out a branch. Let me find one real quick. Okay, here's one. Hold on. Okay, here is a tomato sucker. So we have our main stem here. We have a branch here, a branch going out here. And then we have this one kind of in the armpit is what some people call it. <laughs> 
in the tomato plant. I hope you can see that with my hand back behind there. So this branch right here that creates this slant in between this right angle that you see here, that's called a tomato sucker. Now on indeterminate tomatoes, this tomato sucker is almost like a whole nother plant. It's going to produce tomatoes all, you know, on its own little branch, but they take a whole lot of energy to do so. Not only that, it's going to be eventually really bushy. It's not too bushy right now, but it's gonna eventually be really bushy. So when I look at this tomato plant, I am not someone who prunes all my suckers. There are people who prune all of their tomato suckers and keep one main stem. And it works fantastic for so many people. Um, I choose not to prune my suckers because I don't, or I, I guess I should say I don't choose to prune all of them because I don't find that it's necessary. Now, when you are trying to consider, do I prune, do I not prune the suckers? Here are two things you need to know. Number one, if you prune your tomato suckers, you are likely to get bigger fruit on the tomatoes that do produce. If you don't prune tomato suckers, you will get more tomato fruit, but they will likely be smaller than if you did prune your suckers. So it's a, a one uh, decision that you have to make when determining if you want to prune your suckers or not is, do I want more fruit or do I want bigger fruit? So that's the first thing to consider. The second thing to consider is again, airflow. Like I said, this um, sucker will branch out and get really bushy. It will produce fruit. So it's going to pull down. It's gonna get really heavy. It, I have my trellis back here. It would be almost impossible for me to take this sucker and, and push it all the way back against the trellis and tie it up without uh, putting stress on the plant, without potentially breaking the plant. Not only that, here's my walkway that I'm um, just sitting in currently. And this tomato sucker is only gonna continue growing out here and it's going to eventually impede my walkway. So I am deciding for this particular sucker here to go ahead and prune it. Again, it is a branch by branch decision on pruning tomatoes. There is no, you know, do this for every branch and you're good to go. There are just different questions that we need to ask ourselves, things to consider, fruit size, airflow, touching the ground um, and, and things like that. So I mentioned one thing that I wanted to tell you about pruning tomatoes that you really need to know. So let me go find a good example of that and we'll chat about it. Okay, here's a good example of the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about and that is using pruning or lack thereof to protect our tomatoes from sun scald. So tomatoes are extremely prone to getting burned by the sun. Um, it, it's kind of a fine line because tomatoes need a little bit of sun exposure to ripen, but too much sun and they will be ruined with sun scald. Um, so here you can see I have heavily pruned this main stem. I've done all the lowers. I have even come up above the first fruit set. Here's the first fruit set. I've even come up above there and I have pruned off pieces here um, to help with airflow. So we've already done lower branches, we've done airflow. So now I'm looking at, I was looking at this particular branch right here. It is not a sucker, it's just a regular branch, but you can kind of tell it's not gonna produce any tomatoes. Um, and, and some people, if it's, if it's not a tomato producing branch, um, they cut it off as long as they have enough foliage above to still photosynthesize. Um, so a lot of people would cut off this branch, which is fine, it's a you know, personal decision. But I have been noticing that this branch, look at the tomatoes right here and look at the shadows forming. I'm going to kind of jiggle this branch and you can see the tomatoes. You can see the shadow on those tomatoes. So this branch is absolutely casting shade on these tomatoes. The sun is rising from this direction and, you know, midday it's here. And this, this, this cluster of tomatoes is getting sun like the entire day, which is great because tomatoes are a full sun plant. But again, we really do need to shade a little bit somehow those tomato fruits especially when they are still young and and forming and probably the most prone to sun scald so this branch right here even though it's not producing anything even though it would really help with airflow you know if i cut that branch off goodness this whole thing all has air but i'm choosing to not cut it because it is casting shade on this cluster of tomato fruit right here. And that is another thing that you need to consider when you are uh, pruning tomatoes. You don't wanna to prune tomatoes so, so heavily that there's just no protection whatsoever to your fruit clusters from the sun. Now, if you are using shade cloth, 
uh, that's not going to be an issue because your shade gloss is taking care of the shading. But if you're not using shade cloth, I don't have shade cloth up yet. I probably will be installing it within the next couple of weeks. It is mid-June at the time of filming. So we, we are very close to those 90 to 100 degree days um, in July and August. So I just wanted to make sure to show you that because it is extremely important. Now we have a book called Tomatoes, A Sprout to Supper Guide. It is available in the shop and it takes you through all of the information that you need to know to grow tomatoes successfully. But then we also bring you inside and we show you how to preserve it from, the, the guide is called From Sprout to um, Supper because we take you from the seed to actually serving it at your table. We provide some recipes, show you how to preserve it long-term, all that good stuff. We will link that on the description in the description box below and on the screen somewhere right about there. That's all for today and we'll see y'all next time. Bye!